right, so how many of you men are coming out for that? Come on. Pastor Joey was trying to get you some excitement out there, right? It's Sunday night and you are back in the house of God. How many of you were here this morning? Can you wave your hands in the air like that so I can get a good idea? Oh, awesome. Good, solid, healthy word to find yourself in this morning if you missed it. Make sure you get it. The book of Acts has been where we are living. If you ever wondered if the Bible is applicable for today, you can listen to any of those book of Acts messages. And it truly is the story of us. It has been incredible. And I am excited to get to be with you tonight. Hopefully here tonight together we will get encouraged by the word of God, provoked to love and good works as we grow and understand more of what God is calling us to in 2021. So, I want to hear you tonight. Are you excited about the word? That's what I'm talking about. There they are. I knew there was people in the house. So, would you pray with me? Father, I thank you for tonight. Oh, God, what an honor and a privilege to gather that is, means more to us than it probably ever has here in California, Lord God. That we have the privilege of gathering together. That we have pastors who have honored your word and may created a place so that we could obey your command to gather. And so tonight, Father, with gratitude, we thank you that you are in our midst. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you, to be in your presence Father, just to enjoy that. I thank you, God, that we can even, technology allows us to tune in online and get your word tonight. So we ask as we open your word that you would teach us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the teacher of the church. And that we would have ears to hear what you are speaking to us individually. And that we would have eyes to see what you are doing, God, so that we can become a part of it. And Father, I also want to pray for all of the churches who are gathering all of those, Father God, who are working hard to feed the sheep, to prepare the word of God so that the church can be built up and edified and encouraged. We pray for them tonight. We stand in the gap for them. We speak blessing over them. We speak provision over them. We speak encouragement to the heart of every pastor who's creating this place and giving of themselves so that the people of God can be edified and encouraged. And Lord, we thank you for what you're doing in our midst, in our youth ministry, in our children's ministry, and everything that's happening in this house. We have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts expectant for what you're going to speak to every one of us tonight. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. You know what? I was thinking about my own walk as a believer, you know. And that journey that we go through, if you've been walking with Jesus for very long, you know it's a journey, right? It's got all kinds of moments. We've heard about this morning, highs and lows, highs and lows, all kinds of moments. There's also a growth process. The moment we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we don't become everything that God ever dreamt that we would be. There's a process of transformation. And as I reflected on that, I've been reflecting on that, um, what, I, what I've noticed is that one of the biggest transformational, what should I say, provokers, insiders, right? One of the biggest transformational initiators in my life has always come back to prayer. It is my journey in prayer with my father that has provoked and stimulated every new season, every new door, every change that has ever happened in my life where my desires have become a reality, where my frailties have been dealt with, right, where my sin has been corrected, has been in that place of prayer. It has been that thing, that avenue, that means, that tool that God has used to form me. You know, I remember when I got uh, saved, when I came into the family of God and began that relationship with Jesus, that that prayer, that communication with God was simply me talking to him and him talking to me, right? It was just talking to God. I, re I can remember as a young girl, I started working when I was just 12 years old. And um, I remember being at work on a break. Well, actually, that's not true. Not a break, but many, many, many breaks. In my memories, it was very often I would go outside and outside in the back for my 10, 15 minute break from work, there was always cars parked there, a lot of the work cars, the business cars. And I would sit there and I would talk to God. 
right? And I would sing to God. And believe me, that only sounded good to God, right? But it was a special moment for us. I really believe I was singing in tongues in my memory before I was ever officially, you know, baptized in the Holy Spirit. I just came out of me as a young person, right? As a 12, 13, 14 year old in love with God, right? And loving God and having this relationship. And these seasons, as I look back on those seasons and those moments, they built intimacy, Right? They build that relationship where I get used to hearing my father's voice. And I know that he hears me because he, he responds to me. In those places of prayer, right? I, can know, I know that the place of prayer between me and God was the first time I ever spirit, experienced manifested healing in my body. I remember I was sick and I was on my hands and knees in intercession praying, praying to the Lord for healing. And I remember that sickness just leaving. Right? That's how we, things that we experience in prayer with God, part of our growth path with God. I can remember hearing the voice of God for the first time where I actually physically was riding my bike and the Spirit of God spoke to me and I was like, who was that? But there was nobody else in the area. Incredible word from God that literally changed my life. I, can, I know that my faith walk. Right, that God would invite me into new journeys and every time I would say yes, those yeses would happen in prayer and I would learn and grow in believing and trusting God with my life and my decisions. All it came from, as a young person, just spending time with God. And that's really what prayer is about, right? You're just talking to God. But it wasn't until I was a young adult, I was in my mid to late 20s, when I learned that prayer was actually more than about my personal relationship with God. I had already been walking with God for about 10 years, right? Walking with him intentionally at this point. When I learned and heard for the first time that it was my responsibility as a Christian to pray. Prayer is God giving me access to the supernatural realm. It wasn't just me asking my daddy for help, which was what I had thought of, and right? Inviting God into every situation. Open this door, help me with this, be with me, encourage me, love me. Does that mean that's not true? Oh, that's the heart of it. That's the beauty of it. That's the glory of that relationship. But I learned later on as I grew, right? Not just in age, but in maturity that I had a responsibility to pray. Right? That God had given me access to some authority. That prayer was actually God's plan for me, Teresa, exercising my authority as a Christian on the earth. I remember when I first heard these scriptures, which I'm just going to go through quickly. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. And I was like, whoa. You mean it's not Sarah, Sarah, whatever will be, will be. I just kind of send my prayer out and hope maybe God will decide yes. Wow, this was different. Then I heard around the same time in my life, Luke 10, 19. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Mind-blown emoji right there. Right? Incredible. For me, because I'd never heard these in a sense of believing them in a revelation way before. And then the last one that really blew my mind was out of Matthew 18, 19. It says, and again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth about anything that they may ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. What? I mean, just think about that for a minute. And I was 10 years into my intentional journey with Jesus. 10 years before realizing that prayer wasn't just about me and Jesus. It wasn't just about my relationship with God, but there was a bigger picture. There was something else that God was inviting me to. And I can tell you when I heard these for the first time, I literally thought, I just joined a cult. I'm out of here. God, they're crazy. But then you know what happened? My instructor opened the word of God and just showed me scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And I was raised as a good Southern Baptist. And if the word says it, it's true. 
right? I knew that. If nothing else that I knew, I knew that if the Bible said it, I could build my life on it. And so as they showed me these scriptures, my old thinking, Sarah, Sarah, hopefully God will intervene to, wow, I can actually step up and participate in what God is doing on the earth, not just what God is doing in my own life, right? There was a bigger picture out there about God moving across the earth. So then a few weeks ago, as I was reading through, I remember now from a message about a week and a half ago, Pastor Paul's favorite book. I was reading in the book of Numbers. <laughs> if you don't know what I'm talking about, he preached a few weeks ago. You can listen to the message, right? I was reading through Numbers and I was in chapter 11 and I ran across this verse in, in verse number one and it says this. Now the people became like those who complain of adversity. In the hearing of the Lord... And when the Lord heard it, his anger was kindled and the fire of the Lord burned among them and consumed some of the outskirts of the camp. And as I read that, I thought, boy, that sure reminds me of another verse I quote often. But before I get to that verse, I want to point out something. I looked at this and I thought, God, you really got angry in this moment. You heard their complaining and you got angry, but... As I read through the Old Testament, they complain all the time. They murmur all the time. I mean, this is a repetitive thing. But what was different about this moment? So I did like most of us do or who like to study the word of God, right? I got out and looked up and what is this word, right? What is this Hebrew word complain? What was unique about this moment? And I thought it was interesting that this particular word, which I don't know how to pronounce, but anan in the Hebrew language only occurs two times in the entire Old Testament. Even though it's translating as a word that's commonly used, complain, murmur, that's, those words are used a lot in the English language. But in the Hebrew, the word is only used twice. So I thought I'd look it up. And here's what I noted. The difference between this complaining and murmuring and all of the other times was that in this particular situation, is the dictionary, the, the concordance, the lexicon actually that I was using, Thayer's lexicon said that this time was with the added notion of impiety. To be pious is to be reverent, to be honoring of God. But the people in this moment weren't just complaining as in relationship with God. They were complaining as if there was no God. They were ignoring the presence of God. They were ignoring their relationship with God. They, they were the people, the chosen people. God's promises of salvation was going to come through them, right? He was forming them, he forming this nation that he had chosen out of all the other nations to do his work, to be his representative, to bring salvation. And yet in their complaining because of their circumstances, in this moment, they did it without regard for Jehovah, without regard for for the God who called them and was keeping them and was teaching them and walking with them and present to them in a pillar of fire and a cloud by day. They were impiety, irreverent, irrespectful of God. And so the scripture that it reminded me of, because it sounded a lot like this scripture out of the New Testament, 1 John 5, 14 and 15 says this. This is the confidence which we have before him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked from him. Old Testament, New Testament, the character of God is the same. He hears us. But what a different response. The Old Testament response there was anger. The New Testament were promised answers in this particular scripture, right? In the example out of Numbers, they were complaining. Old Testament people are always complaining, but you know what? In 2020, I bet you many of us did our fair share of complaining, right? And God's response was not about the complaining. It was about how they were doing it. Were they doing it with an acknowledgement like, God, things are tough. I don't like the way they're going, right? There's a complaint in there. 
Or were they taking on the form where there is no God, this stupid world that we live in, there's no hope, there's nothing that can be done. There's a difference, right? There's a difference in how we come in. God hears both of those. In the New Testament verse out of 1 John, there's an ask. And that ask is with a reverence and a respect that was missing out of numbers. He said to ask according to his word, right? Not just whatever I feel like asking, but according to his word means according to his character, according to his will, according to his plan, according to his counsel, that I should ask that way. And how do I know what those things are? Because I take time to find out. I get to know what's in his word and on his heart so that when I pray, there is a beautiful gift that he hears us, right? If we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests which we have asked of him. So where am I going with all this? Learning the value of prayer outside of my own needs and this scripture that jumped out at me about God hearing our prayers God hearing us and the murmuring and complaining or the asking according to his will. Where I'm going with it today is back to Vision Sunday. Just a few weeks ago, we had Vision Sunday. And you can see the vision, right? A new day up here on the platform. Habakkuk 2.2 says to write the vision and make it plain. That the one who reads it may run with it, right? And so my heart today is that I hope to encourage us so that we won't leave that Vision Sunday message back on the back burner, but that it'll stay in front of us, that it'll be plain so that you and I can run with it. I'm gonna take just a piece of that message and encourage us around it because there's grace for that message in this period. God speaks a vision over this local church that you and I are a part of, and God is inviting us into a specific journey in 2021. He's allowing us to place an expectation on that vision and to lay hold of it so that it can be manifested in our life in this year. There's a grace for that. Let's not leave it back, but let's step into and say, Lord, what are you saying? So that I can act, so that I can do what you've called me to do. You and I live in a kingdom, and in this kingdom, we're not slaves. We're children of the king. Jesus actually told his disciples, right? I call you friends because I'm showing you, I've revealed all things from my father to you and I'm showing you what I'm doing. You and I are in a kingdom with a good king, a king who wants to reveal his plan to you and I. But our position in this kingdom comes with two things. Rights, we have access to the throne room. We can go and we can receive help, grace and mercy in a time of need. All of the promises of God are yes and amen, rights of children. But there's also responsibilities. There are responsibilities that you and I have that God has invited us to and he shares with us here on the earth. And those responsibilities include prayer. Exercising our authority is not just a privilege reserved for your own life, for your own family, for your own business, for your own job, for your own health, and for your own wealth. It's a responsibility as sons and daughters of the Most High God. It's part of our stewardship of the earth. We've been given stewardship. What are you talking about? Read Genesis 1 and Genesis 2. It's God's design. And you and I are invited to exercise that stewardship through prayer. In prayer, right, is God's plan for kingdom expansion. He's going to work through you and I, as we do what we heard about on Vision Sunday, as we exercise it in our world and the world. So tonight, what I want to do is I want to talk about four things. I want to cover four things tonight that you and I are invited into as people that God has entrusted with the privilege of prayer, as the privilege of opening your mouth and declaring what God declares of speaking his word in faith into the world because he promises that when we pray according to his word, that he will hear us. And if he hears us, what happens? We have the things that we have asked for. Incredible, incredible privilege. So tonight we're gonna go over these four things. And these are not inclusive by any means. They're just the four things that I felt the Spirit of God would have me to share tonight. 
There are many, many more. But I believe that God is going to provoke us in this season. And as I prepared this message and I talked to the Holy Spirit about these four things, I was reminded that Easter is just around the corner. Is that five Sundays from today? Is it five? Five Sundays from today is Easter. And I thought, wow, why not? Why not in this season set some time apart and make an extra effort to enter into the vision for 2021, to declare a thing in prayer, to take part of our privilege as saints of the Most High God and say, I'm not just going to pray for me and mine and the things that I physically touch, but God, I'm going to pray for some other things that you've invited me to. I want to pray for some other things that are on your heart according to your word. I liked what Pastor Dan said in his Vision Sunday when he said, if, if we will declare in prayer, if we will live in the light, then we will see a new day, right? Genesis 1-5, there was night and there was day day one. And the invitation is to act on that word. Just to sit back and say at the end of 2021, I didn't see it. I don't know where it was. I don't know what happened because it's an if, like many things in the Bible. If then, right? If you will, then there is a result. And just the testimony we heard this morning and the testimonies that have been shared over the last month of people who believed the vision that was declared at the beginning of 2020 and said, God, you said double harvest. You said double blessing. You said double work, God. And so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the double work so I can see the double harvest. I'm going to believe on you through every difficult circumstance. That letter that he read this morning where they said, you know what? I'm just sowing. I'm just believing because God declared it and I'm holding on to it. And God came through. He was faithful. That's the invitation that we have before us as we look ahead to the rest of 2020. Will we do the if so that we can say then Wow, God showed up in an incredible way. So one of the areas that we're invited to exercise our authority on earth, given to us as sons and daughters of the King of Kings, the one who has invited us to rule and reign with him on the earth, the body of Christ on the earth, doing what Jesus would have us to do, is in the area of authority. The authority that's over us. The authority that we're subject to as citizens of the city of, Cal of San Bernardino, right? Being here in this building, we're subject to that. Uh, being living in California, living in the United States, living right in this nation, there are authorities and God has called us to pray for them. So the first scripture I wanna read with you is 1 Timothy 2, 1 and 2. It says this, first of all, then I urge that entreaties and prayers and petitions and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men for kings and all who are in authority so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Sometimes we think that the time and season that we're going through here in the United States, and if you've been watching the news at all, you know about the pastor up in Canada, right, who's trying to gather his church Right? But he's been arrested for that cause, or he was arrested. I haven't been keeping up with the case. But for, the, for what? For gathering together. And we see these as hard times, and they are. But you should imagine the time that this scripture was written in. Right? When Paul wrote this to Timothy, right? that, that, the Emperor Nero, <laughs> no, no, no American or Canadian authority had anything on him. Right? Much more difficult times. But even in that, Paul says, I urge you that entreaties, prayers, and petitions, and thanksgivings be made on behalf of all men for kings and all who are in authority. Why? Why? Why would I pray for them if I don't agree with them? Why would I pray for them if they're not judging righteously? Why would I pray for them if I don't agree with their judgments and laws and how they're executing it? Why would I do that? I'm only going to pray for their removal, Lord. That's, that's not what it says. Um... But what does he say? He says, so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all what? Godliness and dignity. In the midst of any regime, 
any leadership, God has called his church to lead lives of godliness and dignity. And he wants us to pray so that even under the greatest persecution, we would be allowed to do those things. And if you go on in this passage, it's really about the salvation of others. Because God wants the gospel to be preached and proclaimed. Right? That's the motivation behind all of this. So actually our prayers for others circle around for our good, for kingdom good. Right? We, we're benefit as we pray for others. Another a scripture, Jeremiah 29, 7 says this. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf for in its welfare you will have welfare. So even as we pray for authorities, we pray for our city, we pray for the Inland Empire, we pray for those in leadership, right? In their welfare, in their good, the church also can prosper and thrive and do the things that God has called us to. So let's just not talk about this right tonight. Let's actually pray. I'm going to invite Pastor Joe up to pray with, uh, lead us in prayer. Not for us to watch him pray, but to pray. So if you would like to stand to your feet tonight um, and let's join him. Um, If the guys in the back, if you guys can put up that verse one more time in Jeremiah. Thank you. It says, seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will have welfare. I just did a quick little uh, definition of welfare in the dictionary, and and it says this, health, happiness, fortune, and peace. And so that's what we're going to pray for our nation and those in authority. Father, we just come before you today in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we um, look to your word for direction, God. We, Lord, you said if, if, you know, our wor- if your words abide in us and we abide in your word, Lord, that we will ask what we will and it shall be done for us by our Father in heaven. And so, Lord, we intercede right now on behalf of the United States of America. And God, today we ask for peace in this land. We ask that you'd raise up peace in this land. God, we ask that you'd raise up uh, uh, um, uh, fortune and happiness, God, and, and, and bring about a work of God, Lord, in this place. Lord, we, we are asking for this nation. God, we, we ask for wisdom on behalf of our leaders, God, whomever they are, whether we uh, identify with their political party or not, God, we ask that you would, uh, uh, that you would uh, dispense your wisdom upon them, Lord, that you would lead them, that you would guide them, Father God, Lord, that you would send people to them who would speak the truth, uh, God, to them, who would help to point them in the, in the way that they should go. God, we ask that you'd protect them and that you'd keep them. And God, we, Lord, I even want to be so bold today as, in, in asking, Lord, that you would clean up our politics. Uh, God, that you would, Lord, there is hypocrisy and there is wrongdoing and there is deception, Lord, in both parties, God, or in, th- in all three parties, whatever party they identify. God, we're asking that you would raise up righteous people, God, people who know the will of God and people who are so bold as to execute that will on our behalf, God. We are not going to sit by idly and stand by and allow, Lord, uh, the the philosophies, God, of the enemy and the ideologies, God, and the doctrines of the enemy to take this nation and, and, and move it in the direction that he would have. But God, we say in the name of Jesus, no. And we come against that in the name of Jesus and we declare that righteousness shall prevail in your mighty name. God, we also ask that you'd bring about a unity among us here in the United States of America. Lord, may there be an improvement of race relations, Lord. Lord, may there be an improvement of these different things, Lord, that, we, that, that are being used to divide us, God, and, and being used to cause us to tear one another apart, God. Lord, we also pray for the health of this nation. Lord, in the name of Jesus, that COVID virus has to go back to hell where it came from. God, we ask that you would give our leaders direction on how to get a handle on this thing. And Lord, stomp it out. Put it out, God. Lord, rid the coronavirus from this nation in the mighty name name of Jesus, we pray. God, we thank you for innovation and insight as it relates to vaccines and, Lord, giving our health workers and our first responders wisdom and insight on how to deal with these things. And, God, we thank you today in Jesus' name that COVID-19 is a thing of the past. In your mighty name, we pray. Lord, we thank you for good uh, in this nation. God, we thank you that you're not done using this nation, that you have a purpose, and everything that you have purpose, Lord, shall come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. 
So be it. That's what amen means. So be it. We're in agreement with that. You can go ahead and have a seat. Thank you, Pastor Joseph. The second thing I think the Lord would like to remind us that our responsibility in prayer as believers is to pray for the persecuted church, to pray for persecuted believers. A few years ago in the book of Colossians, Pastor Dan, I don't know how many years ago, but I remember you, you did a message or a couple of messages on that. And since that time, you've been praying as you pray, right, that their faith would not falter, that they would endure to the end those who are persecuted and in chains for us. And he's been leading us in that. So I just want to remind us of that tonight. I want to remind us of that couple of things that we see in the scripture that we pray for people who are in situations of persecution. Let's look at Colossians 4.3. This is Paul writing. And he says, praying at the same time for us as well. That God will open up to us a door for the word. So that we may speak forth the mystery of Christ. For which I have also been imprisoned. Right? Believers who are persecuted for their faith, are persecuted for preaching the gospel, we can see from Paul's writings have a desire, and that desire is to get out and to preach the gospel, that God would open doors and avenues where they would be able to go in safely, where they would be able to proclaim, and if it means change, it means change, but their faith would not falter, that they would endure to the end, right, that doors of opportunity would be open to the persecuted church, that they would continue to thrive and reach all of those in their nations. Thank God for men and women who are willing to lay down their life on a daily basis in places where the gospel is outlawed, where places where it is illegal to do what you and I are doing, even in social distancing. They can't do it at all, even if they were a hundred feet apart. They just can't gather in the name of Jesus in those nations. And what do they ask? Paul says, pray. Pray. I've been imprisoned for this, he says. And what I'm asking is not that I won't be imprisoned again, but that doors of opportunity would be open so that I would fulfill my call. Again, in the letter uh, to the Ephesians, it says in verse 6, With all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the Spirit. And with this in view, be on alert with all perseverance and petitions for all the saints. And pray on my behalf that utterance may be given to me in the opening of my mouth, to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains. He's writing this in chains. Then that in proclaiming that I might speak boldly as I ought to speak. That God would give them words, that he would fill them with his word, that they would be able to speak boldly in the most difficult and heavy of oppression. And then the last scripture I'm going to read, and then Pastor Mike is going to come up and lead us in prayer for persecuted believers. Luke 22:32 32 says this, But I have prayed for you, Jesus said, that your faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Right. Jesus was looking at Peter and he knew that his faith would fail him. He knew that the oppression that he felt would cause him to run away in that season. Right? But he said, when you come again, you haven't disqualified yourself. Strengthen others. Do what I've called you to do. So let's take some time tonight and we're going to go ahead and stand to your feet. Getting a little exercise here up and down. And let's pray together for persecuted believers. Pastor Mike. Father, we just pray for those that are are in another country where they are not able to worship freely, that they're not able to spread the gospel freely. Father, we just pray for them that you will open up the eyes of those, the understanding of those that they are ministering to, Father. Father, we ask for you to give them the utterance that is needed. Father, give them the right words to say, Father, that they will have the right words to land on the right ears. Father, the steps that they take have to be well calculated, Father, so that they can avoid 
being persecuted even worse. And so, Father, I thank you that you're guarding every step that they take. Father, I thank you that you're giving them the words to say at the right time. Father, I thank you that, that you are opening up doors, Father, opening up doors of utterance for them. Father, that wherever they go, Father, they will come across the right people that he need to hear exactly what it is. Oh, Father, we just, we thank you so much for giving their, for increasing their faith, Father. Father, for letting them not falter. Because, Father, they are strong, growing stronger in faith, and that's what's keeping them persevering in faith, Father, so that they will not falter. We thank you, Father, that you are keeping them strong spiritually, that you're visiting them in the wee hours of the morning. When they, if they're in prison, Father, I thank you that you're visiting them and you're, you're encouraging them by your spirit that on the inside. Father, we just pray for them right now. Father, just like you uh, released the, the chains off of Paul, Father, when he was in prison, you're doing that as well, Father, with, your, with our brothers and sisters that are in other countries that are being persecuted. Father, we know, Father, that we agree together with them, Father. We are, are, there, we are members of the body of Christ. They are members of the body of Christ. Your word says that if two or more shall agree as to touching anything, it will be done for them. And, Father, we are agreeing for doors of utterance for them that the gospel can be preached to these nations so that those nations can be changed, Father, so that more people, the whole reason we're here is so that more people can learn about you so that their lives can be changed and, uh, and we will have the harvest be even better than it is at this moment. And we thank you, Father. Encourage our, believe, our brothers and sisters who are believers in other countries, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray in agreement. Amen. Amen. Pastor Mike. Thank you. All right. Another, the third thing tonight that I would like us to pray for together as we look at the scriptures and God, an invitation that God has asked us to pray for. And this goes back to those people we were talking about in the book of Numbers that were complaining, right? But Israel has always been part of God's plan, right? The word of God is forever, right? And he has a plan and a covenant and Israel is the people of the future, right? They are in our future. They are, salvation comes from the Jews. Jesus was, right, a Jew and God has called us to pray for Jerusalem, pray for that land. And Pastor Steve's gonna pray in a little bit. I just wanna read a couple of scriptures and he's gonna lead us in that. The first one is Psalms 122, verses six and seven. It says, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity within your palaces. Oh, that's one of the reasons you've heard it from this pulpit many times that that Israel is a priority for us, right? God has called us to pray for them. And he's also spoken a blessing, right? That we will be blessed when we bless Israel. Our relationship with them brings a specific blessing to us as believers, as the church of the living God. And so we're invited to undergird that work through prayer. Isaiah 62, 6 and 7 says this. On your walls, O Jerusalem, I have appointed watchmen. Watchmen are people who pray, people who are looking out, people who are seeing what's coming, what God is doing. All day and all night, they will never keep silent. You who remind the Lord, right? How do we do that? In prayer. Take no rest for yourselves and give him no rest until he establishes and makes Jerusalem a praise on the earth. Pastor Steve, come and lead us in prayer for Jerusalem, for Israel. Amen. Let's pray. Good for your blood and heart. There you go. <laughs> Almighty God, thank you for your people who are joining in to obey this command, a command to pray for the shalom of Jerusalem. And so we do, Lord. 
Thank you, Lord, that, that shalom means nothing missing, nothing broken, <laughs> nothing lacking. And so we bless Jerusalem in the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMelech, the king of that, the city of the great king. And we pray for peace in their walls, Lord, and in all of their cities. We pray for prosperity and shalom in every city in Israel. And we thank you, Lord, that you have even blessed us with the promise that those who love Israel will prosper and have security. Thank you, God, that you love them and we choose to love them as you have. And we bless the watchmen and women, the intercessors that are praying day and night for Israel, day and night for Jerusalem, day and night for their salvation. And I want to thank you and praise you, Almighty God, that you have promised in, you have shown us in Romans 11, three waves of the end time harvest. And the middle one is the salvation of Israel. And so we pray, Lord, for the first wave, Lord, for so many Gentiles, including Muslims and Arabs, to become followers of King Jesus, that the Jews will become jealous of the salvation and joy and prosperity of the people around them, and they will all be saved. That second wave that will then bring in the third wave of so many more Gentiles coming to you that it will be life from the dead and the rapture of the church. And so, how, Lord, we bless Israel. We bless what you're doing for their salvation. And we thank you that we can participate in it. And thank you, God, for what you're doing to use Israel to accomplish your purposes in the world, even now. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Steve. You know, one of the things that happens as we pray for these things that might not be in our immediate circle is that we begin to see things with a bigger perspective, right? We begin to see things historically and in the future, and then all of a sudden, God begins to show us things. And as we read the news, and as we read about the persecuted church, and as we see what's happening with Israel, or we read about things in politics, right, then we, we develop a habit of bringing those things to God, realizing that we have a role here on the earth to speak those things, to declare his goodness, to pray for righteousness, to pray for justice, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, to pray so that God's will can come come to pass. Why? Because we are joint heirs with Jesus Christ, right? He is the head and we are the body and we are here on the earth doing his work as he is seated at the right hand of the Father. We are in this together and it helps our perspective to expand so that we're not always just looking at our immediate circumstances and it changes us, it grows us, it helps us to walk in maturity as we begin to see a bigger picture. It also helps us as we read the word, we begin to see things we've never seen before. We're gonna bring it a little bit closer now and I'm gonna read a couple scriptures of the, the last point that the, I felt the Holy Spirit would have us to begin to pray for in this season and remind the church of, and that was to pray for our enemies. Matthew 5, 43 and 45 says, you have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, this is Jesus speaking, by the way, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. Wow. You mean we look like our Father when we pray for those who persecute us and we love our enemies? Wow. For he causes his Son to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Loving our enemies, praying for those who persecute us. <laughs> Want to look like God? There you go. Right there, popped out. Right? We will be sons of our Father. Acts 760 says this. Then falling on his knees, he cried out with a loud voice. Right? This is Stephen, by the way. We, 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 we uh, heard this story and studied it in our, in our walk through Acts. So this is back when we were in chapter 7. It, he said, Lord... Do not hold this sin against them. Right there on his deathbed, when he was being stoned, this is what he said. He prayed for them. Do not hold this sin against them. 
Having said this, he fell asleep. All right. He died. He went to be with God, but his body stayed there. But that, he was being in the midst of persecution. I don't think that that was the first time that he had prayed for the persecutors, prayed for his enemies. Right? It had to come out of who he was. I'm sure that he had already been in that habit because in the middle of that pressure and that turmoil, what's inside comes out. And that was what was inside of him, right? I would, I would dare to say that he had a habit of that already. Luke 6, 27 and 28 says, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. Pastor Sue, would you come and lead us? in this prayer. In my office that we're struggling sometimes with, um, oh, you can go ahead and stand, um, with relationships you know, sometimes we minister about that around Thanksgiving and stuff when everyone's coming to dinner. And during this COVID season, it's been interesting to see which, <laughs> which parties our family members aligned with and discussions that got heated and we had to kind of agree to disagree. And, um, you know, some interesting things have gone on. And, you know, tempers have flared and people are passionate about their opinions and how they feel and... And um, we, we all understand that. And so in meditating on this particular verse, I found that sometimes, you know, you can't just love your enemies. <laughs> sometimes when someone has really declared that they're your enemy and they're purposely doing things to come against you, maybe in the workplace. I was reading uh, some uh, kind of a testimony from uh, a member the other day, and she was saying how there was somebody at work that was intentionally maligning their character, intentionally undoing what she was doing and, and trying to make her look bad to the supervisor. Can we all say amen to that? You know, the Bible says that God gives us favor with him and man. And I think of Daniel, Jesus, so many that people became jealous of that favor. And that can happen in the workplace. And, um, you know, I'm not saying we should do the word backwards, I guess we can do the word backwards, but in this particular verse, I found that for me, when I'm struggling with a relationship in my life that someone seems to have set themselves against me, that I'll choose to start by praying for them. I start with, pray for those who mistreat you. I start with that one, because I can pray. Maybe I don't even know what to say, or how to approach the subject, or how to, you know, do anything in the natural uh, concerning my own behavior, but I can start with prayer. So we can begin to pray for those that seem to have set themselves against us or be doing things that are hard to, to deal with in, in your relationship with them. And then choose to bless them if they're cursing you. Bless them. Maybe they even curse you out <laughs> to your face. And all you know to say is, we'll bless you. You know, I know many of us driving along the freeway and someone kind of gives us a gesture that seems to be cursing us and your first response is not, bless you. You know, you want to you wanna do something back. But he says here that when they curse us, we're to bless them. So if you start with prayer toward that person, even if they're cursing with you, you're going to have a different insight into them. God many times will show you their insecurities or their fears or the fact that they don't know him like you know him. So they don't know how to pray. And they don't, know how, they don't have favors. So they're trying to control the situation and manipulate and figure it out. Whereas you're just being sweet, going to church, tithing, doing what you're supposed to do. And God's giving you favor. See, if they don't know Jesus, they don't have that. We can feel sorry for them, right? Then, then begin to do good to those who hate you. Do good. I know there was a time that somebody did something, it was a, a staff relationship, that hurt me, but that person didn't know they hurt me. But their behavior, something they did, hurt me. And, and I struggled with it, and I kind of had a little thing in there, you know, a thing in my craw. And um, I wanted to get over it. They didn't even know they hurt me, and it was nothing I needed to really confront. It was just more my issue. Do I hear an amen? We can just have our own issues. 
And God put in my heart to give her my most favorite ring. Ooh, that was a tough one. I didn't want to give her that ring. I liked that ring. It had some sentimental value to me, actually. But I gave it to her. As far as I know, I've never seen her wear it. But it did something on the inside of me. I did good to her because I was struggling in, in, in my, um, my affections toward her. Are you with me? So the Holy Spirit will show you something that you can do that's good, that whether they know it's good or not or receive it in the right way or not, it's going to change you. Are you with me? And then he'll bring you to a place where you can love your enemies. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we pray for those that maybe have set themselves against us. Father, they may be in inner, our inner circle of family, extended family. They may be in the workplace. They may literally be a physical neighbor that just seems to do stuff to us and our property. Whatever, Father, we pray for them in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask you to turn their hearts as you turn the water courses. Father, we ask you to give us favor with them. You say we have favor with you, but give us favor with them, Father, that for whatever reasons that they don't like us or they're against us, Father, that you will soften their hearts and that they will no longer see us as an enemy, but see us as someone that you can use to actually bring them into relationship with you. Father, if we don't have favor with them, we, you can't use us to minister to them, and you know that, Father. So, Father, we ask you to turn their hearts and, and, and work in this situation, Father, whatever it is, that you will bring remedy, that you will bring a cure, that you will bring the love that needs to go on there. And then, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for helping us to bless them. Father, we bless them. Right now, anyone that's coming to our mind, Father, we say in the name of Jesus, you're blessed. We bless them. Father, even if they're cursing us and wanting the worst things to happen to us, Father, we choose to stand and bless them. Father, we pray that if we have our own insecurities toward them, our own jealousies toward them, Father, that we will want to see them blessed. We will want to see your favor come upon them. Even when they don't deserve it because they've been mean to us, Father, bless them. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Father, thank you for opening our eyes to show us ways that we can do good. We can do good to them and bless them, Father, and let them see the love of God in action. Father, not just words, but, but, but things that will tangibly speak to their heart, Father. Help us to show good. And then, Father, we thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we declare that we love every person on this planet. Father, we love them. We love them as you love them. Father, even if they're diametrically opposed to us politically and religiously in every other way, Father, we love them. We do good to them. Father, we bless them. And Father, we ask you to bring them into relationship with you. Father, you desire that they come to know you as Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, Father, let us not be a hindrance to that path. But Father, use us to, to help them to come into relationship with you. Father, and let there not be one person that is an, our enemy because of something we have done or said. But, Father, let us be the, the catalyst that you would use to bring them to you, Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Sue. It's good. All right. It's good, right? Good. Here's the deal. We pray. God hears. We complain, he hears too. So let's not do that, right? Let's do the, let's do the prayer part of it. I want to close off tonight with this scripture out of 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. It says, for the one who desires life, to love and to see good days, must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. I'm sure complaining falls in there. He must turn away from evil and do good. Pastor Sue talked about that a little bit tonight. Good. He must seek peace and pursue it. And then it says, for the eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ears attended to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. You know, and that right here, Peter is quoting right out of Psalms chapter 34. Just like we started this message, the character of God doesn't change. 
He's been listening to his people from the beginning. David knew that God listened to him and all of his prayers in the Psalms as he cried out to God. Right, and right here, Peter's reminding us that God still listens, that he still hears. So will we stand up and take our position? And will we realize that, that God is moving on the earth, but he's working with his church, with his bride, to do his will? He's working with us so that we can see a thing. We can work his will in us, right? His will in us so that we can do that. We can open our mouth and declare his praises, declare his work so that we can open our mouth and push back the darkness that is on the earth so that the kingdom of God would come, right? That's what we're doing. That's what this period is about, right? You and I bring in the kingdom of God wherever we go. The word says the kingdom of God is within us. Well, you know what? I want to get it out. I want to open my mouth and declare a thing so that God can work, right? He works his will in us and he commands it through us. And then the spirit comes and latches onto that word and does what he wants to do across the earth. So in this season, church, all of you online, all of you here, would you consider a challenge over the next five weeks as we walk to the celebration of Easter, as we first walk to that moment of Good Friday and remembering his sacrifice, would we also take some of our time, some of our energy and pray for these things, pray for the persecuted church, pray for the peace of Jerusalem, pray for our enemies, pray for those in authority. They might not be the things that come to your mind right away when you wake up in the morning and you get before the Father and you're like, God, help me with my day, help me with my attitude, help me with my relationships, help me on my job, open doors of opportunity for me, God. Let me be a vessel for you, all of that continue. But would you add this? over the next five weeks. And, and we're gonna do something special here at The Rock. We've decided that in this season, as we go up to Easter, that we're actually gonna go live on our Facebook page with prayer Monday through Friday. And it's gonna kick off this Tuesday. It's gonna be different times throughout the day. So you can just go on to The Rock Church Facebook if you're a Facebook person. If you're not a Facebook person, don't get an account for this. We have a lot of prayer meetings here at church. We have opportunities for prayer. You can go on our website and find out those physically. I'm not promoting that for you to get a Facebook page, but the reality is that a lot of us have them and opportunities to come together and take a few minutes and to pray for something outside of ourselves, to get in align with what God is doing in other believers and come into agreement according to his word and to declare those things. Maybe you were sitting here tonight and every time we got up or we were online watching and as we prayed, you might've felt a little awkward. Well, do I open my mouth? Do I pray out loud? I'm not sure what to say. Do I just nod my head? How does this work exactly? Well, this is an opportunity for you to sit in front of your computer and you can pray as loud as you want. Nobody will hear you except those that are in your house, right? You can shout down the prayer as you learn to pray, as you exercise those gifts. So it's both an opportunity to come into an agreement, but also an opportunity for you to pray. Because I firmly believe that prayer is not so much taught as it is caught. Right? When I say that I learned to pray as a young adult, it's because I got into an environment with a bunch of crazy Christians who loved to pray. Every time we'd go have a coffee, we'd end up in prayer, right? When we were in church, it was about prayer. Every gathering was about prayer. So I want to encourage you with that. But tonight, before we close, probably the most important thing that I want to share with you tonight, out of everything else that we've shared, out of all the prayer, praying that we've done together, would you give me just a few more minutes? Those of you who are online, don't go anywhere. This is really important. God has a word for you too. Would you just close your eyes for a minute? And I want to ask you a couple of questions. Just stay seated, focus in on God, and I want to ask you a question. And I want you to answer it in your heart. I want you to examine yourself tonight. And I just have a very simple question for you to reflect on as you look at your own heart with your eyes closed. Ask yourself this question. If I were to die tonight, would I open my eyes in heaven or in hell? Now, you might be sitting here tonight and going, well, I'm watching church online. I came to church. I sure hope that I would open my eyes in heaven. But nowhere in the Bible does it say, in God's plan does it say that we can hope our way into heaven. 
Maybe your first response was, I think I'll get to heaven. The Bible doesn't say we can think our way into heaven. You may have a lot of scripture memorized, but that's not going to get you into heaven. Maybe you said to yourself, I've been in church all of my life. My family, my grandmother, I've been in church. I, so I guess I'm going to go to heaven because I go to church. And, and that just seems to be the connection there. The Bible doesn't say that going to church, although it's important and it's going to build you, is going to get you in to heaven. Right. Jesus said this. Let's look at what God says about getting and spending eternity with him in heaven. He said, I am the way, Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no one, not the best person out there, the most churchgoer, the best American, no one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said that he is the way. So if we're going to go to the Father, if we're going to spend eternity in heaven with God, we're going to have to get there by going and depending on Jesus. It's not just knowing the name of Jesus because Satan and his demons know the name of Jesus. That doesn't mean they're saved. They're not going to spend eternity in heaven. They're going to spend eternity in hell. But God has a plan. He so loved the world that he gave his life so that you and I could spend eternity with him. So there's one way. How do we get there? How do I sure? How is this not a hope or a thinking, but a certainty that I will spend eternity in heaven with God? There's only one way. Jesus said this, most assuredly I say to you, unless you are born of water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh, all of us were born of the flesh here and online, right? Born from our mothers, is flesh. But that was is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, you must be born again. So the invitation tonight, as you're listening, is to be born again. That's God's way of guaranteeing that you will spend eternity with heaven. What does that mean to be born again? I don't know all of the other thoughts that may be provoked in your mind when you hear those terms. Things that have been defined by media or movies or television or anything like that, forget that. What does it mean to be born again? It means that you've given Jesus, you've given God all of your heart and all of your life. And there's an exchange, if you give him all of your heart and all of your life, he's going to give you his spirit and you're going to be born again. The spirit that is inside of you is going to come to life. It's not weird. It's a gift. It's a beautiful transformation. And tonight, we want to be sure before you log offline, before you leave this building, that you don't step out of here, have an accident, and end up in hell instead of heaven. Jesus is calling you tonight. He's opening the doors and he's giving you an invitation. Revelation chapter 3 says this, So then because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth. What is God saying? God's saying we have to be all in 100%, all of our heart and all of our life. It's not about, oh, well, I do a little bit of good Christian things and I do a little bit of what I want. When you give all of your heart and all of your life, you're going to leave behind those things and you're going to run and press in towards the things of God because he's going to transform you from the inside out. So how do we do this? How do you start that tonight? How do you enter into that relationship with God? It's very simple. Very simple. God says this, if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So that's my invitation to you tonight. The Holy Spirit is making that invitation to you tonight. When I asked you that first question, if you were not sure that you knew that you would spend eternity with heaven, then this is the invitation to you. If you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, you will be safe. If you're here tonight and you're online and you're ready to make that decision, I'm just going to count one, two, three. I'm going to stop on this platform. And when I do that, I want you to get your hand in the air. If you're sitting here going, but I'm not sure, do you? I think I need to do it. Yes, God is calling you. Be sure, know that you're going to spend an eternity with God forever. Maybe you've been doing a lot of your own thing and you're lukewarm. And some of God's saying some of your own thing, but tonight is the night when you're going to give all of your heart and all of your life. And you're going to step in to that eternity and that relationship with God. If the Holy Spirit is tugging at you tonight, then when I hit this platform and count to three, 
I want you just to pop your hand in the air. If you're online, I want you to go ahead and click the button there that the hosts have, and they're going to reach out to you. If you're doing more of your thing instead of God's thing, if you're ready to give him all of your heart and your life, then this is for you. One, you're going to get your hand up as soon as I get to three. Two, God is calling you tonight. Three, go ahead and stick your hand in the air just as a sign that you are ready to accept that invitation. One, two gentlemen right here. God bless you. I see your hands. Others here tonight, God is calling you into a relationship with you, with him. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, we'll just, let's all do something tonight. Let's all go ahead and stand to our feet. Stand to our feet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite you, gentlemen. We're not going to embarrass you. We just want to give you some information. We want to pray to you, pray with you. We don't get saved, right, just by raising our hand. We get saved by inviting Jesus to come into our heart and into our life. So if that's you tonight, if you raised your hand or if you didn't raise your hand but you know you should have, I want you to do something. I want you to get out of your seat and come right here, right? If you'd like to, you can put your mask on. If you don't have one, you don't need to. But come on down right to the front and we're going to pray with you and welcome you into the family of God. Just a few more seconds if that's you tonight. Don't hesitate. Come on down. God is going to meet you right here and you will be born again. Transform you from the inside out. Thank you, God. Well, we are super excited. We rejoice with you. The first day of the rest of your life, God loves you. This is your family. And we want you to keep coming back here. Right, but right now, the first thing, this relationship begins because we believe with the heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say a prayer so that you can repeat after me. Don't worry about the words if you miss some. We're all going to pray with you because we are in agreement and supporting you as your family in this moment as you walk in and begin that relationship with Jesus. Dear God, thank you that you called me tonight. Thank you that your love compelled me. Tonight, I repent. I turn away from my sin. And I receive your forgiveness. Thank you for washing me clean. Thank you for this new beginning with you. I give you all of my heart and all of my life. And I thank you that you give me your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come and fill me now. I'm turning away from my old life and turning to you, God. And as of this day, I am born again. I am going to heaven. I'm leaving hell behind. And I'm looking forward to life with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Can you celebrate them tonight? So good, so wonderful. Listen, we want to put some information in your hands. We want to introduce you to some friends. I can see that God is moving here. Your tears are beautiful. The Lord sees those. He sees those tonight. And so we're going to have you go right here. Our friends are just going to take you to give you some information, right, so that we can equip you to start this journey with Jesus. God bless you. Woo! Well, saints, I have kept you way over. So you've got your prayer in for tonight. You can rescue those 10 minutes back. Let me bless you. Just put your hands in the air. Father, I just bless your people. Thank you, God, that they are called by your name. Thank you that as they go out into the highways and the byways this week, that they are going to be a light for Jesus Christ, that your words are going to be in their mouth. I thank you that everything they put their hand to, they are going to prosper. And Lord, with a great big shout of faith, we say that the Inland Empire shall be saved. One life at a time, right? God bless you. We love you. 
Hey there, thank you so much for joining us online. What a blast getting into church with all of you. If you just gave your heart to Jesus and prayed the salvation prayer with our pastor, congratulations and welcome to the family of God. Here at The Rock, we wanna get you plugged in and set up for success with your new walk with God. Now in a moment, I'd like you to head to our Respond to God page so you can fill out some information and we can get in touch with you. We not only wanna give you some free material, but we'd also like to get you hooked up with a friend who can help guide you through your new relationship with God. We have multiple friends available for you in any kind of interaction you'd like, whether that be a Zoom chat, a phone call, email, or any type of COVID-friendly interaction. We've got friends just for you. We have this great little booklet called Welcome to Your Destiny, Easy Steps to a Successful Future with God. If you live within the continental United States, we'd love to get this paper copy in your hands. If you don't live here, don't even worry about it. We've got an electronic copy in PDF format we'd love to get to you as well. We also have this fun little comic book for your kids out there. If any of those kids just gave their heart to Jesus, this comic book is for you. Now it helps explain their new walk with God in a fun, sort of age-friendly way that they can understand. Okay, so now what I'd like you to do is go ahead and click on that link provided. And if you can't find a link, don't worry about it. We'll take you to our webpage. Just go to rockchurch.com and click on the Respond to God tab at the bottom right-hand corner. This is gonna take you to a new page where we can get all of your information so we can send you either one of these free copies and we can get you hooked up with a friend who will help walk you through these next steps. Well, it has been wonderful hearing the Word of God with you today. We can't wait to see you at our next service. And remember, God loves you and so do we.